Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about special ends, namely the wall focused special ends of the gold variety. Everybody should be familiar with the gold armor. You receive a copy of the gold armor at the day 7 for the login rewards. You'll see here with on this page the classification of the special end, melee, universal. Uh, you'll see also the eight skills at the bottom to unlock. Most players will just go, okay, this is a gold special end. It's a rare special end, so I will use it. Um, and then uh, not really understand what's going on with the skills at the bottom. So what I've done here is that I've consolidated the skills, the description for the gold special ends, uh, and I've created a spreadsheet. Okay. In this spreadsheet, you'll find a link in the description box below um, for the 11 special ends, the 11 uh, combat-based special ends that we are talking about today. Um, uh, I have the description here on the left side, the classification. I have the name of the special end. Um, uh, you'll notice that I have put up uh, further uh, classification of the special ends. Uh, they have different class. They are different colors here. So the first three are, com are attack focus special ends. The bullet and the slim arch are defense focus special ends. Uh, the driver and giant tooth are support ends. Spiny is a hunting end and then the specialists are um, specialists in their own classes. You'll notice that the skill one for all of the ends are identical. Um, at level 10, uh, all of the skills here are compared at level 10 on a level 50 special end. Um, uh, at level 10, the skill 1 would increase the soldiers in the squad for the special end uh, by 18,100. Um, uh, I've arranged the skills also so they um, uh, so, it's, so it's a bit clearer. Skill 6 um, uh, has similarities to skill 1. And it has similarities across the different special ends and also differences. You will notice that for all of the skill sixes, you will have this, uh, this component that says, oh no, undo, undo, okay. You will have this component that says, Increase the dominance tree effect by 250%. Um, the dominance tree effect is skill 1. So with skill 1 and skill 6, uh, both at level 10, you have a total troop size for the unit at 80,850 plus whatever um, the unit size is on your barracks, or rather your rally center. There is difference across the special ends on their skill 6, because if you look at the attacking special ends, they have attack plus 20, defense plus 10, um, uh, versus the defensive special ends, which have uh, attack plus 10, defense plus 20. There are also minor differences within the classes. So, example here, Go Armor has um, uh, attack and defense plus 10, and then 25% uh, 
um, uh, attack on invading ant hills. For the defensive ants, you'll also notice that um, the defensive and the support ants, you'll notice that um, uh, there, are, there are some that have um, a HP boost on the skill 6 instead of a uh, tendency towards defense. For the jet, for golden spiny, uh, it leans towards attack on skill 6. Um, uh, and then for the generals, you have the guardians uh, leaning towards defense with a combat speed boost. Um, and then the acid general and the new world general uh, have their shooters and carriers leaning towards attack. And uh, further damage dealt for the acid general and combat speed boosts for the new world general. For skill 3 and 4, um, across the ends, it's all very similar. Um, you have squad defense for skill 3, squad attack for skill 4. Uh, the only exception is the golden spiny, which has an extra 30% bonus for attacking wild creatures. For your specialists, you have a further increase to the defense and the attacks, but only for their class. So their percentage boosts are 35% rather than 30% uh, for the universal ends. Skill 7 uh, provides either an attack or defense or HP um, boost um, and it's different from skills 3 and 4 because instead of boosting the squad only the skill 7 boosts the entire unit that means if you have uh, gold armor uh, gold sugar and jack jumper all on the same unit they will each receive their own 30% attack boost on skill 4 and then another um, 20%, 10 or 20% attack boost from their skill 6. And then uh, they will each receive an extra 90% um, attack boost from each other's skill 7. So 3 by 3, 90%. So that's why the attack ends are classified here together. Uh, they all have um, additional attack boosts on their uh, skill 7. The defensive and support ends have alternately um, uh, defense boosts and unit health boosts on their skill 7. So that digs into their ability to soak up more damage and then to um, make it harder for the opponent to attack into your uh, and kill your troops. Uh, Ghost Spiny here, remember she had attack focus on her skill 6. Uh, her skill 7 goes defense focus and she boosts her um, unit's defense. Likewise, uh, the guard general leans defensive, whereas the attack and sorry, the acid and new world generals lean towards attack. So their skill sevens reinforce that, but only for their class. Here I have an additional column, um, only for gold spiny. Uh, her skill 8 gives her an additional 30% attack to her squad. Um, uh, this is uh, more or less an extra skill 4, but not even a full skill 4 because her regular skill 4 has got 30% boost for attacking wild creatures. It's not even like skill 7 because it's a skill that... 
um, affects only her squad. Skill 7 affects the entire unit. So for the most expensive skill to unlock, um, it is actually very, very poor value. Um, uh, and I will discourage uh, players from pushing their ghost by knee all the way until uh, they are leveling her, her, her skill 8. Unlocking and leveling her skill 8. Um, uh, Ghost Spiny probably is good for really beginner players if you have no other special ends. Um, you need a little bit of help on killing insects. Then uh, perhaps unlock the skill 2 and then the skill 4. Help you get some more insects killed. But uh, by the time you're ready to do skill 8, uh, you should be getting other special ends that are a bit better than Go Spiny. And you should more or less transit from using Go Spiny to using um, other special ends that you get from the draw instead. Alright, so over here I've consolidated the uh, total boost of the special end for attack and defense and HP. And you can see how the uh, attack base ends have more attack, the defense base and the support base ends have more defense and more HP. Um, you can see how the um, Generals also lean towards uh, attack for the shooters and the carriers, and then defense for the guardians. Further down the um, table, you can see that I have stacked up skills 2, 5, and 8, except for Gold Spiny, who only has skill 2 and skill 5. All right. Uh, these are the activate. Uh, these are the active skills for the ends. Uh, some of the skills have conditions or activate only on certain rounds. Um, uh, there, there is a percentage chance that they activate or not activate, and if they are damage based skills, uh, there's a listed percentage damage on the description. Uh, these are numbers taken from the level 10 skill. Uh, some of the skills also increase at different rates depending on the special end level. Uh, so this is the scaling. And then uh, we have the total damage output at uh, level 50. So uh, level 50 special end, level 10 uh, for each of the skill. And... Uh, if I take the 50 times 2.5% and I add to the base skill here, then I'll have the total damage output. Uh, the skills may hit any number of targets, so this will tell you how many targets it can hit. And the range tells you how far further forward uh, of the end squad it can hit. So if a uh, end has a range of 1, it'll hit directly the squad in front of it. That means if it is in the front line, the first position of your squad, it will hit the first position of the opposing, opposing uh, the enemy. Some of the skills have uh, effects. Um, they either um, increase your damage output or it negates the opponent's um, skills or and the description is um, below. For the attack base ends, you'll notice uh, most of them are straightforward attack skills. Uh, only Golden Sugar has a enemy debuff and this debuff allows you to do further damage to the opponent. You'll notice also um, that um, you, the damage output of the skills tend to be balanced. 
um, example, if you compare Jack Jumper's first skill and the uh, second skill, both don't need preparation. The second skill has a much higher activation rate, but the damage output is lower. It scales less also. They hit the same number of targets, um, and the range is similar. All right, but uh, the damage output of the second skill is lower, but it's more consistent. If you look at the third skill, it has a very, very high damage output, uh, but the incidence is quite is uh, lower. It needs a preparation, and uh, that means it's every other round already. And then after that, it's a, a 50% activation skill. And then for the number of targets it hits, it hits only one. So it will activate less frequently. Uh, you hit less targets compared to the skill two. Um, and, but you'll do way more damage. For the defensive ends, they do have uh, damage skills. So their skill 1 and skill 2 here are straightforward damage skills also, Slim Arch and Bullet. Uh, some have preparation, some don't. Um, but the damage output can be good also. Uh, the third skills for Bullet and Slim Arch are um, uh, control skills. So they disable, when they activate, they will disable the uh, opponent's uh, action for the next round. On that topic of control skills, uh, you have the support ends, the driver and the giant tooth, with two of the skills with control um, of, over the enemy and uh, debuff against enemy's uh, damage. So you have enemy re uh, attack reduction, damage dealt reduction, and uh, disable the combat skill. Um, uh, so you can see how the, the game actually has classified the, the ends as support because they are there to help you stay alive. The Gold Spiny has a uh, very straightforward first skill, just straight damage. Um, and the second skill is an enemy uh, debuff. It uh, decreases their defense. So the following round, when you hit that squad, uh, you'll do more damage. The skills of the specialists are designed to uh, reinforce the purpose of the specialist class. So guards are meant to be meat shields, not do much damage, but attack, but absorb a lot of damage themselves. All right, so the skills of the guard general uh, lean really, really strongly into that. On the first skill, it has uh, round one round prep and a really fairly low incidence rate despite the one round prep. It does a lot of damage for guards. It scales quite well and hits two targets. The problem with this skill is that after it act activates, um, uh, the guards, the guard general's own squad will be debuffed for two rounds and it loses attack, right? You'll notice also for the Guard General, skill 5 and skill 8 um, uh, are zero damage output skills. Skill 5 will reduce the damage taken by two ally squads. I will assume that ally uh, might be its own squad also. The skill 8 um, activates at a high rate, 70% is a very good activation rate. Um, but what it does is that it uh, reduce, that it negates the enemy's 
uh, combat skill. Uh, shooters, for, uh, generally the attack um, class for the game. The shooters, the, sho the soldiers shooters have the highest attack stat compared to carriers and of course guardians. Uh, so the asset general leans into that and it uh, increases the uh, damage output for your shooters further. So you have here um, uh, really, really high uh, damage output on skills 1 and 3. All right. And on skill 2, uh, there is some damage output. Um, uh, but what happens after the, the skill activates is that it increases... Um, uh, the shooter's own attack further uh, for two rounds. Then hopefully on the next round you have skill one and the you have the skill two and skill eight activating uh, with the skill five buff. The skill eight debuffs the opponent and makes them take more damage. So you can see how shooters are all about damage. Attack, attack, attack. Uh, carriers being the balanced um, uh, utility class for the game um, uh, have their new world general uh, balanced also between attack and defense very nicely. Uh, skill 2 um, is a debuff. It deals some damage, good damage output here. Uh, but it's mainly a debuff also um, and it increases the um, opponent's damage taken. Skill 5 is a protective skill. It decreases the um, it decreases the opponent's skill damage by 35%. And this is quite incredible because it is uh, four rounds of activation of 100%. Um, the skill 8 is a straight damage skill for the new world general. So it has got one buff of your own attack, one debuff of the opponent's um, attack, and then one skill that does uh, that is focused on doing damage for you right so I hope this helps everybody to understand the special ends the different special ends and what they are designed to do and what they are good to do um, and how you should use them for groundhogs uh, ideally what you will do is you will stack all of the attack special ends or maybe perhaps uh, the Acid and New World General, but uh, making sure that uh, you are using a pure class, all three units full of shooters, or all three units full of carriers for that, uh, for the way if you are using the generals. Um, uh, and you want to stack all of your attack buffs. Uh, the skill 7 is very important. Um, and you throw your troops at the Groundhog. Because the Groundhog does no damage to you. So HP and defense and mitigation is quite pointless. Um, uh, on PvP, when the enemy actually will do, the, uh, will do damage to your troops, then... Uh, um, uh, sometimes you will, uh, you may be better off with a bit of defense focus on your ends. Extra HP, extra defense from some of the defensive ends, maybe give you a bit more balance on your, uh, in your unit, uh, and will uh, mitigate some damage for you. Spiny, golden spiny, I think is designed as a. 
um, uh, beginner's end. As mentioned before, you use her to help you kill wild creatures, but once you are able to kill level 15 wild creatures with um, um, your troops, then um, hopefully you have better special ends compared to the golden spiny and you should transit to using them. The generals are fantastic for their classes. Uh, guard general is probably a bit too defensive, so it's really unpopular. Um, uh, and I think most players wouldn't choose to invest in the guard general. Um, uh, yeah, so that is an overview of the special ends and uh, which ones do what and um, uh, what you can use them for, right? Thank you very much for watching the video um, uh, and have a good day. Bye-bye.